Hey, Flipped Geometry, this is Mr. Alley. We're going to be going into Lesson 1.6, but that's so long and there are so many slides for the, for the lecture that I thought I would break into two videos for you and we're going to spend two days on this. So Lesson 1.6a today, the first of two parts on two-dimensional figures. Um, we're going to be looking first at curves and what a curve is. Curves are any continuous set of points. Now, it sounds like a line. A line is a continuous set of points that goes forever in two directions and one dimension. A curve is different. A curve does not have to be a straight line. A curve is curvy. So I've got a couple of curves there for you drawn on the bottom of the page, and there's some examples um, there, and, and there's some terms we want to use. A closed curve is any curve that starts and ends at the same point. So this curve here does not start and end at the same point. See, it ends over here and it starts over here, not closed. But the other two are closed. If I were to start here and draw my figure eight, right, I end where I started. That's a closed curve. This one, if I start here and draw my little squishy like embryo outline, um, then this is also a closed curve because I start and end at the same point. So closed curves start and end at the same point. And they're going to be the fundamental idea underneath the concept of a polygon. Okay, um, a, uh, a simple curve does not cross its own path. So these two curves here are simple. This is not closed, but it is simple. It does not cross itself. This one does not cross itself. This one does. And so this one is not simple. Um, the other two are. So I have two closed curves and one that is not closed, and I have two simple curves and one that is not simple. So take a look at those. Uh, make sure that you understand them before you let the video go on. All right. We're going to be talking also about specific closed simple curves called circles. A circle is one way to get a closed simple curve, and a circle is the set of all points in a plane a given distance from a given point, which is the circle's center. So this is the center of the circle. This would be the radius, and we'll get to that definition on the next slide. But um, the distance from C to B is swung around uh, where C is the center of rotation, and all the points on the circle are the same distance from C. So C is the center of the circle, and it represents uh, all the points a given distance away. As promised, here's the definition of the word radius. So this is any point, uh, sorry, any segment that starts at the uh, edge of a circle, starts on a circle, and goes to the center. So it's labeled here as CB, but I could draw another radius here, or another radius here, or another radius here. A radius is any segment that starts at the center and goes to the edge of the circle. Um, we talk about circles having an interior and an exterior. So an interior of a circle is the set of points whose distance from the center is less than the radius length. So if this is the center of the circle and this is the radius length, all of these points here are closer to the center than the distance of the radius. And so they fall inside the circle. And the, the definition makes it harder than it is. The interior of a circle is the inside of a circle. Okay, that's not hard. Neither is the exterior of a circle, which would be all the points whose distance from the center is greater than the radius length. So that would be all the points out here, okay? Interior, exterior, inside, outside. These are pretty simple ideas, okay? Any simple closed curve divides a plane into three disjointed sets. The curve itself, its interior, and its exterior. We've done things like this before. We had to pull a point out of a line and say we have two half lines and this point. We pulled a line out of a plane and said we had two half planes and that line. Now, if I pull a simple closed curve out of a plane, I have the interior of the curve, the exterior of the curve, and the curve itself. Okay, So I've dissected the plane into three things. These are all concepts that you've had already. Okay, um, A region is the union of a simple closed curve and its interior. So um, it's the stuff inside and the thing itself. Remember, the curve makes three things, the outside of the curve, the inside of the curve, and the curve itself. When we talk about a region, we stick the inside and the thing itself and make it one object, and that is the region that we're talking about. So here we're able to say this part of a plane, 
the boundary of that and everything inside. Kind of like looking at a world map and looking at a county line or a state line or a national line where that line itself is part of the state or the county and everything inside of it is as well, right? So these are regions of a plane. Um, when we start talking about a set of points or a curve, we can say that a curve is convex or concave. So a convex point, or sorry, a convex curve is a curve where all the endpoints in the set are completely contained by the set. Um, and so you can, you can draw a segment from edge to edge of the curve and it always goes through the middle. You can't draw a segment from edge to edge that goes outside. It, it sounds harder than it is. Convex means it sticks out. And if all of the joints of the curve stick out, the curve never curves in, then you've got a convex shape. And we'll go through lots of examples of this in class, so don't worry about it. The opposite of that would be a concave curve, where you could find places where you could go from edge to edge and be outside the curve, uh, in the exterior of the curve. And um, those would be like kidney bean shapes, or sometimes a, a star will give you um, pokeyati points, convex points, but also sticky any parts, the concave part of the curve. And again, lots of examples that we'll go through in class, so don't stress if this doesn't make immediate sense to you. So this conversation of concave and convex curves lead us, leads us to polygons. Polygons is really where we were headed with all of this. A polygon is a, a figure that has straight edges and points. So it's not a circle, but it is a simple closed curve that has vertices and segment edges. So it's straight with joints, right? Things like squares and hexagons and octagons and heptagons and nonagons and dodecagons and all the wonderful n-gons out there. Every segment of that polygon we call a side, and every point where two segments come together we call a vertex. Okay, so that's just some terminology for us. We're going to see lots of polygons here. Um, we're going to see whether are any of these are polygons. Now, a polygon, remember, has to be a simple closed curve. Um, so this here is, is this a polygon? Yes, it is. It is a pentagon. Um, it has five sides and five vertices. It is convex, right? Because you can't go from edge to edge anywhere and pass outside the curve. So this is a convex polygon called a pentagon. This is not a polygon. And the reason for that is that this side here, if I can get my mouse back, this side here is not a straight line. This is, this is a curve. And we can't have a curve, um, a, a bendy part of the shape in a polygon. It all has to be straight lines and corners. So this part out here, straight lines and corners. But because this is swooshy, this is not a polygon. This is just a simple closed curve, but not a polygon, okay? This over here, this is a polygon. It's got straight lines and corners, but notice that it is not convex. It has convex, convex portions. Um, these are convex, but this part here is concave. You can go from edge to edge and be outside the shape, okay? So this is a polygon. It's a concave polygon. This is a simple curve, but it is not closed. We don't start and end at the same point. It does have straight lines and, and corners, segments and vertices, but um, they don't start in it at the same place, so this can't be a polygon either. Okay, if you don't understand any of those, rewind the video and watch that again. Um, equilateral polygons are polygons whose sides are all the same length. So the, uh, the poster child for an equilateral polygon is this equilateral triangle, all three sides of the same length. And so it is equilateral. We also use the word regular. Regular means that it is equilateral and equangular, which is the next slide. So you could say equilateral or you could say regular. This is a regular triangle. There are regular um, quadrilaterals, which would be squares. There are regular pentagons, heptagons, etc. All right. Um, an equangular polygon is a polygon in which all the angles have the same degree. Now, uh, without exception, every equilateral triangle is also an equangular triangle. And with, um, without exception, every regular 
polygon that is equilateral must also be equiangular. You can't have an equilateral that is not equiangular. Okay, um, at least I don't think you can. Maybe some smart people can disprove me, but that comes to mind. All right, so uh, regular means both equilateral and equiangular. Okay, and we'll use that term a lot. Okay, classifying polygons. There are several kinds of polygons three sided, four sided, five sided, six sided, etc. And they all have a special name, and mostly they end in gone. Um, and that has to do with some Greek prefix for how many sides, and then gone just means it's a flat two-dimensional shape on a plane, right? So a pentagon has five sides, heptagon, seven sides, decagon, ten sides, dodecagon, twelve sides, etc. You can have as many gons as you know the Greek prefix is for. Um, the only thing is we don't call them trigons and quadgons. Just by convention, it's a triangle and a quadrilateral. But otherwise, it's a gon, okay, of some kind. Um, some examples. Classify each polygon by its number of sides, then state whether it forms a concave or convex region, and whether it is equilateral, equangular, regular, or none of these. So... Here we have, um, oh, here we have an example of me being wrong. Uh, here we have a, a shape that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. So it is a heptagon. And um, almost all of it is sticky outy, but this little part is sticky inny. So it's convex almost everywhere. But if there's even one region where it's concave, then this is a concave heptagon. And it is equilateral. It's marked as all the sides being of equal length. But I'm wrong. I just a moment ago said some smart people can disprove me, and here it happened. Um, all the angles are not the same. Um, and so we have, uh, we have most of the angles the same. But these two are not the same, and neither would this one be. So we have uh, an equilateral but not equangular heptagon. With triangles, though, and squares. Um, no, only with triangles. The sides, if the sides are equal, so are the, the angles. Okay, here we have a quadrilateral. One, two, three, four sides, quadrilateral. And it is convex. There's no place where you can go from edge to edge and be outside the figure. So this is a convex quadrilateral. These two sides are of the same length, but these two sides are dissimilar, so it's not equilateral. And uh, all four angles are different, so this is not equangular. This is an irregular quadrilateral convex, okay? And here, um, my picture is in the way. Let me see if I can get rid of him. Oops, go back. Uh, this figure has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. Um, and this is an octagon. And it is regular because it has all sides the same and all angles the same. So this is a regular octagon, and it is convex. All right? If there's any questions there, go back and look at that again. Um, we are going to be talking about how to name a polygon here real quick. Oftentimes, all the vertices of a polygon will be labeled with letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, O, P, however many points there are. And you always label a polygon. Um, listing the vertices in consecutive clockwise order or counterclockwise order, doesn't matter which way you go around the figure, but don't skip around naming the points, skipping across the figure, label them going around in a circle around the figure, okay? And then um, we can have diagonals. A diagonal is any um, segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices. You can have uh, diagonals in figures with more sides than four. In a triangle, there's no such thing as a diagonal because every vertice is consecutive. Um, but in a quadrilateral, you can go across the figure, and then in anything more than four vertices, you can go across the figure, okay, and get diagonals. Uh, and we are done. So that's the first part of Lesson 1.6. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you tomorrow in class. And until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I.